the future book from 2021. We're live here in Poing in Munich in Germany at the Canon Customer Experience Center. You know, this year has been a year of incredible change, challenging, of course, but at the same time, rapid change in every industry, driving innovation. And times like this, downturns, times of shakeup, are the moments when innovators really do step up to think about the future of their organizations, to think how can their businesses work in new, different and better ways. If you think about the retail industry, for example, many retailers said they saw 10 years of change in the first eight weeks of the pandemic. If you think about the healthcare industry, 92% of people now first contact their doctor through their mobile phone, transforming our access and the ways in which we gain healthcare. If you think about the energy sector, rapid change from dirty old coal to new clean energy technologies. In every sector you see change. And I think we're about to see huge change in the book publishing sector too, the $100 billion business which we are all part of. You know, the challenge, however, is that for the last years, we haven't seen any growth. So what is it which will really drive the future of our business? How can you find new opportunities to drive growth through innovation? And our theme this year at the Future Book Forum 21 is all about transforming the printed book through sustainable innovation. And what do we mean by sustainable innovation? Well, obviously it's about sustainability. So how can we reduce the impact both on the environment, but also in terms of addressing social issues like social inequality and accessibility to education, literacy, health and so much more. But it's also not just reducing the negatives, it's also how can we increase the positive impacts? How can we make the world a better place? How can we add more value to society? And I think one of the great things about the printed book is how it really can inspire people emotionally as well as functionally to think differently and to explore new opportunities and give them the confidence to explore and to develop in their worlds. So I'm delighted to welcome here, live in Poing in Germany, the UN's Global Goals Program Manager at the UN Global Compact Network. She's based in the UK. Please welcome Jessica Lobo. Thank you for inviting me today and I'm delighted to be opening this year's Future Book Forum. Well, in the past year, we've been speaking about the future a lot. And when we speak about the future, and particularly when business speaks about the future, there are a lot of words that are banded about. So recovery, resilience, growth, sustainability, purpose. There's a real change happening and a real appetite in business at the moment to be purpose-led and do good in the world. But we often stumble on articulating what that actually means. Well, in 2015, the UN undertook one of the world's largest consultations ever to answer that question and find out what it will take to create the future we want. There were tens of thousands of stakeholders involved, um, and the outcome of that process was a 15-year roadmap adopted by all 193 member states for us to end poverty, fight inequalities and injustice, and put in place the necessary measures to protect our planet by 2030. At the heart of the 2030 agenda are these 17 sustainable development goals, which clearly define the world we want, applying to all nations and ensuring that no one is left behind. These sustainable development goals, also known as the SDGs or the global goals, they articulate a powerful vision for improving our world. They motivate ambitious and transformative action and call for worldwide collaboration between governments, civil society and business. So the global goals really call on business to leverage their resources, their creativity and innovative capabilities to solve these sustainable development issues. But as much as the goals rely on business, there's also never been a better time for business to use the goals. 73% of CEOs say that they expect the pressure to act on sustainability to grow significantly over the next three years. So investing in achieving the SDGs is not only going to help build a sustainable society, but it's also going to help meet those growing demands by stakeholders and investors for corporate sustainability action. We provide on the ground support, um, access to local partnerships and, and opportunities and tools and resources that can help you really understand what this agenda means for you. 
This is an opportunity. And organisations that embrace the opportunities to innovate around the SDGs will be the market leaders of tomorrow. The SDGs can be used as the lens for ideation to help drive that generation of new ideas. So by using the SDGs as the problem that you need to solve, your teams can then uncover new markets, rethink current approaches, find opportunities to become resilient and find ways to disrupt rather than being disrupted yourself. Sustainability is the catalyst for this change and as we saw in some of the examples that I shared, digital technology and innovation are the enablers of this. This is a huge agenda, but as I said, it's a huge opportunity. If you only do one thing today, then um, I ask you to do this. Start that conversation. Speak to your colleagues, your manager, your board, and find out what the SDGs mean for your organization. Speak to your suppliers, your stakeholders, and find out what the goals mean for them. And speak to your communities, your competitors, or the innovators amongst you that are already working on this agenda and can help scale up those conversations into actions for the future. Because collaboration is really key to implementing sustainability innovation and driving the future that we want. That future and those conversations begin right here this afternoon at the Future Book Forum. I'm delighted to be here and really excited to see what this afternoon brings. Thank you for, for inviting me to kick this afternoon off and I look forward to connecting as we work together on the world's largest to-do list. Though we enter individually, we're all in one frame. One shot, one take, to make beautiful imagery. Capture this, a world under threat. Social and environmental issues are hard to accept, but distant problems become more tangible. Image and tech makes the concealed fathomable. Now picture this, a new way to move forward, paving the way for less global impact, bringing the world back into focus. Business done better and ready to show face with considered approach and transparency. Solid foundations were built with integrity. Now look again. Closed loop thinking means components are used again. So we champion schemes for reuse intelligence. Waste has no place, can be replaced and restored. See the big picture. We can no longer accept what we were sold. Fairness and truth left out in the cold. Let's prepare a picture for better days via the gaze of this digital age. Your image is your story. It must be told. International projects increasing in talent, identifying, sparking light, for those without sight for the future. A stepping stone for those young in age that they may reach center stage. The philosophy of this change? Kyose, transforming perceptions through the blink of an eye. The purpose is to rally all in empathy to do more good for humanity. We foresee the scenes for effects unseen. Working together for the common good is what we will achieve. Perfection we will never claim. But new shots are taken every day. This is the footprint, the picture we hope to sustain. So I love that word kyose. It's great, isn't mm -hmm. it? Some mm -hmm. fantastic Japanese word. Live and work together for the common good. And really that's what we're about as a community, the Future Book Forum yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so you're responsible specifically in Canon for commercial printing. And you know, book pub book printing itself is, is a very important part mm -hmm. of that. So mm -hmm. how do you see the sustainable innovation challenge within the book printing business? It's, um, it is developing, I would say, mm -hmm. because sustainability has been always uh, important for the book printing industry, and, um, but it's becoming a, a different urgency today. And uh, you can see that, that first of all, uh, print service providers in the book printing industry, they are experiencing an in increasing um, demand for uh, carbon neutral uh, print operations, yep. which is coming from their clients and again driven by their consumers. Yeah? Um, meanwhile, so many book printers are using um, uh, carbon balanced uh, papers, recycling papers, and they are um, 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 realizing carbon balanced and neutral print runs, uh, print operations. This is becoming uh, a new standard. But what we see, and this is the difference from maybe five years ago, more and more um, of our clients rethink the way how they operate their productions and uh, how they develop their business, not because they are forced by somebody, it's becoming more and more 
a conviction. And I think this is, this is a very important development, a very important step. Um, and it's then by them combining um, sustainability approach, their own one, uh, with uh, new technologies probably to really uh, innovate uh, in that direction and create something new. So joining us live from New York City is the founder of a fantastic new platform, Bookshop. Dot org, which is rapidly shaking up many aspects of our publishing industry. It's been described in magazines as a revolutionary moment in the history of book selling. Thank you for joining me at the Future Book Forum 2021. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about what Bookshop is for those of you who aren't familiar, and then um, talk a little bit about what's the point? Um, what are we doing? What's the point of bookshop and overall what are we doing with our industry and the culture and the business of books going forward into the future. Um, so first I'm going to show you a quick presentation on bookshop.org and then I'll talk a bit more about sustainability. So bookshop is an e-commerce revolution for local bookstores. Um, here's a quick look at what our homepage looks like, make it really easy. One of the things that we wanted to do is just keep it super simple. Um, one thing I know about customers is they don't like getting confused and they don't like getting frustrated. So if they want to look, if they're looking for a book, we just want them to remember the name bookshop.org, go here, be able to find a book, search for a book, buy it and get out and make it as simple as possible. Um, I think that's extremely important when designing any digital experience is to make it simple and pleasant, a fun place to be. You can see the colors are bright. It's a good place that makes people happy. And that's what the overall point is. And that's what makes people coming back. The fact that uh, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see we've raised $17.5 million for local bookstores. Uh, it's actually closer to 20 million now um, globally including the US, United Kingdom, and we recently launched in beta in Spain. Now, our efforts, that money has kept many, many stores, hundreds of stores in business during the COVID-19 pandemic when they were forced to shut their doors. So it's been extremely meaningful for us to be running this business and be making that work and being effective during that time. They're often really small. They sometimes literally are mom and pop businesses. They don't necessarily know how to build a website, much less a good e-commerce platform that's going to make their customers happy and keep them coming back and effectively compete with Amazon. And on the same time, like publishers, authors, fans of books, they need some place that they can link to when they're promoting books online that isn't Amazon. And up until now, there hasn't really been a good solution, not a good universal blanket solution that could have um, helped thousands of bookstores. Um, and be just as easy and pleasant to shop from as Amazon. So that's our goal. And you know, Bookshop's really easy to set up. You can do it in half an hour. If you're a bookstore, you can create a bookshop.org storefront in about as much time as it takes to set up a Facebook page. Within a half an hour, you can have a banner, you can have a bio, you can have your socials linked, you can create recommendation lists, and you can start selling books to your customers. And you know what the cost is? Zero. No cost whatsoever for stores. So there's no risk for stores, which was super important when the pandemic hit. We had 250 stores on the platform in February of 2020. By June of 2020, we had 1,100 stores on the platform. They were able to quickly adopt the platform and start selling books to their customers um, because it was so simple and because it was free. And because of the way the bookshop works, the orders from a customer goes directly to a wholesaler, which in the US is Ingram, in the UK it's Gardner's. That wholesaler gets the book to the customer. So the bookstores don't actually have to touch a book. For the bookstores, the profit margin is pure profit. And we give 30% of the cover price of every sale to the bookstore. That's 30% of the cover price. So if we discount, which we occasionally do for promotions or to be competitive with Amazon, the discount doesn't affect the store. It affects us, but 
we're sending about 82% of our profit margin right now directly to independent bookstores because we're a mission-based organization. We're not in it for the money. We're in it to preserve the culture and the great work that independent bookstores do. You know, the difference between Bookshop and a lot of startups is most startups talk about disruption. They're really excited to get into an industry that is kind of stayed in its ways, that isn't operating efficiently, and saying, I'm going to disrupt that industry. I'm going to, through technology, be more efficient, and I'm going to steal that industry up from underneath them. I'm going to steal that business and bring it to me and disrupt that old dinosaur. A well, problem with that mindset is that I love many of the dinosaurs in the book world. I love the old authors. I love the old books. I love the bookstores. I love the booksellers that are dedicating their lives to talking about books, getting people excited about books. I love the human connection that happens over books at bookstores and the activism, activism and, and the advocacy that bookstores are giving in the world of books. And I think ultimately technology and innovation is a means to an end, it's not an end in itself. And the end that we should be working towards is an end of like human happiness and sustainability and creating structures that are conducive to life and happiness and fulfillment and human connection and all these things that bookstores actually do very well. So we're using technology to reinforce an industry that we care about. Thank you so much, Andy. And I think Andy's just about to join us live online now. That was a pre-recorded video. Um, but just as he's joining, a few comments from you um, online around the world. Um, somebody says, I'm seeing local bookstores opening up uh, all the time and doing very well. Maybe as COVID restrictions start to lift eventually, um, people will go back uh, to the stores and rediscover their love of their neighborhood bookshop. Um, another, another comment, um, Amazon is actually only a placeholder for any company uh, which wins a large amount of market share. Competition keeps economies uh, more healthy. And I guess part of the point there is that we can, there's space for everybody in a market which is growing. So if we can grow the book market, if we can find ways which books can do more good, and you know, Amazon too um, can contribute lots uh, towards the future of the business. Um, also a comment, it's so wonderful what you you do um, at bookshop.org and thank you so much for it Andy so there's a great comment um, Andy welcome thank you it's great to be here okay um, we've got lots of entrepreneurs across the world we've got 850 people in 72 different countries uh, tuning in right now and um, I think they also love to hear a little bit about how you got here um, so in a very very brief kind of story um, how did you get to the point where you created bookshop.org yeah, well, in my 20s, I was in IT. I was working for companies like Disney, doing big SAP implementations, doing e-commerce, B2B stuff, um, stuff that I was good at, but I had no passion for. What I had passion for was books. And so when I had the opportunity to start editing and writing, I switched and became an editor-in-chief of a magazine. Then I went and I launched my first company, Electric Literature, in 2009 which was all about using digital technology to support the culture that I love, which is the culture around books and literature. And, and electric literature su succeeded partly just by being an optimistic voice in a time that there was a lot of um, trepidation and anxiety and negativity around technology, um, as particularly in the book world. And so we embraced it and we decided, you know, we can use all everything, YouTube, social media, we can all use it in the service of books. And, Electric literature success allowed me to, to do new things. Like I started Literary Hub with Morgan Entry and Grove Atlantic in 2015, which has been extremely successful. It's got 25 million readers a year, all reading about books. And um, I also created Catapult, co-created Catapult in 2015 as well, which is a book publisher. So I've been publishing books into the ecosystem for six years now um, and loving that experience. Um, and the whole time I was just increasingly nervous about the future of the industry um, because I believe that diversity is important for any industry. Diversity of books, authors, perspectives, and also economic diversity um, in the same way that biodiversity is important for the planet. And 
I have, you know, I have a deep love of bookstores because I grew up with them and, and I know how important they were to me as a reader and a young person. And um, I know how important they are to emerging authors too. So I wanted to create something that would give back. So I created Bookshop partly drawing on my old tech background and my understanding of the publishing industry. And that's how I got here. Fantastic. What a great story. And, and you talk about some of the, um, the, the results you've had so far. So 20 million revenue um, over your short time uh, in existence and 29,000 affiliates, 1.6 million customers. And I love the, the quote of uh, 82% of your profits going back to the bookstores. But I, I wonder if I can get you to jump ahead five years time. What would you, what's your dream for bookshop.org by 2026? I want Bookshop to be the best platform on the internet to buy a book. If you love books and you're a reader and you want to buy a book, you have a better experience in Bookshop than anywhere else. And, if you, and I also want to be the best platform in the world for a bookseller to sell a book. I want to be able to have the personality and humanity and warmth of an individuality, quirkiness of every bookstore to come through through the platform. And that can be done in a, many different ways, but expect more customization um, on the behalf of bookstores being able to sell their own inventory or send orders to a wholesaler, sell sidelines, create a direct connection to their customers, um, all of that kind of stuff. Be very transparent, give them great analytics, great conversion rates, um, just be the best place to sell books and the best place to buy books online. And a question we have from the audience, um, you know, one of the things about going to a local bookstore is you have no idea what you're looking for when you walk in the door. Um, how do you replicate that kind of experience um, when, you, when you're online? So you talked a little bit about you know, bringing humanity online and bringing human curated book lists, for example. How can you replicate that magic of the local bookstore in a global online platform? Yeah, well, I think that it's the book recommendations are the heart of it. And okay. so if you're um, Reese Witherspoon's book club, and you create a list of all of your picks like that's those are the books that you're endorsing if you're a small um, bookseller in local in the woods of maine you create a list like this is the best fiction these are the best kids books of the season you create those lists you can share those lists on social media and during the black lives matter movement um last year we saw anti-racist reading lists go viral and generate millions of dollars of sales for the stores that were creating those lists so a list on Bookshop is not just limited to our website. It can spread throughout the internet um, on social media and bring new customers to those books. Okay, another question. Um, we've got a few more questions and we've got little time, so, so quick answers to these ones. Um, in which other countries might you start um, your business soon? Well, I think that that's really up to the countries. We come generally when um, people who are invested in the industry ask us and say like, well, we really need Bookshop here. So, you know, we've been talking to, to people in different countries and we're hopefully to move to new countries in 2023, but it's going to depend on like who asks us. So if you're in book selling and you really think Bookshop belongs in your country or in the EU, you know, reach out to us. We're happy to have that conversation. Okay, fantastic. Another, another question and comment. Great presentation. One of the highlights of the pandemic in 2020 was that publishers who have distribution and fulfillment framework in-house did better. So how would, could publishers from Senegal, as an example, be part of bookshop.org? I think the importance is to have strong wholesalers with consumer direct fulfillment capacity. Mm -hmm. And that exists in the UK and Gardeners, it exists in the US with Ingram. I think that wholesalers in Africa, wholesalers in Europe, need to have the ability to ship directly to customers and then it becomes quite easy to do it. Okay, I have 17 other questions. I'm not going to ask you them. They all say the same thing. They say, great job, Andy. When are you coming to my country? So um, there's clearly a lot of interest and demand uh, for you. So maybe they need to pick up the phone or uh, email and, and start connecting with you right now. Um, thank you, Andy, for that so far. Um, I, love, I love your passion for the industry. Um, and you described it as an industry of ideas and how to change culture. That was a great quote. Um, and you're going to join us a little bit later as one of the judges of the Innovators Cauldron. So welcome back. Welcome back to the Future Book Forum 2021. We're now moving to the Ideas Challenge. Tell us how it started and what's been happening in preparation for today. As the forum is about how to use technology 
um, to innovate the book publishing business, we decided to combine sustainability with innovation and that we wanted to present fresh with new ideas how to transform the, trans the, the, the printed book through sustainable innovation. And this was the moment actually when you came, Peter, and um, you came up with the idea how to collect new ideas and uh, then to present them in a uh, Dragon's Den format. It's, it's so exciting that you give it is, startups yeah. a new companies, ideas, and uh, a platform to, to present. And that's what I really like. And um, for us, it's also the opportunity now to make it more interactive. So also all participants, they can vote for their favorite idea. And uh, this was something that we really thought it's, it's fantastic. And uh, we found Hive. And Hive is an innovation company based here in Munich. And um, we prepared a short video to give you an understanding how this collaboration looked like um, and what we achieved. My name is Tino. And today I'm here in the heart of Munich to meet Niklas from the innovation company Hive. For the Future Book Forum, we were looking for ideas how to make the printed book more sustainable through innovation. And Hive helped us to run our Idea Challenge 2021. As Canon, we did not only want to present existing ideas from the market, but really fresh and new ones. Since the lead time was limited, we also had to take care of that the innovation process is efficient and promising. We soon came up with the idea to use open innovation and therefore we collaborated with Hive. At Hive, one of our innovation tools is the Hive Crowd. It empowers our clients to co-create with a global community of creators. It enables companies to use the wisdom of the crowd to come up with ideas, use cases and concepts. The community brings in different points of view into the ideation process. They contribute their knowledge from different industries, from their local countries and help each other by collaborating on the ideas. Our community consists of about 10,000 people from a variety of backgrounds who love to be part of innovation challenges, to learn, compete, exchange and be part of a community of like-minded people. For Canon, we developed a step-by-step -step approach to achieve their goals. After framing workshop, the challenge went live on our platform. During the submission phase, the Hive Crowd members and external participants sign in and submit their ideas. Over time, more and more contributions are submitted and discussed within the community. Collaboration and community management is essential. Therefore, the platform allows for interaction between Canon, Hive and the participants. During the seven weeks, the community submitted almost 100 ideas and gave each other feedback in more than 700 comments. Afterwards, we shortlisted the finalists. For the event, we trained the participants to develop their pitches. The shortlisting process was not only exciting, but also a lot of fun. We had four decision criteria to choose the finalists and also the winner of our idea challenge. Practical implementation. How innovative is the idea? Does the idea contribute to the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations? And is there a link to the business with printed books? We are super happy with the awesome results, the number of promising ideas to choose from and a great collaboration with Canon. And we are hoping that you will be inspired by our idea challenge, how to put innovation into practice and that you take away fresh and new ideas, how to make your business with printed books more sustainable. So I love the power of open innovation, the ability to bring ideas from all sorts of places, to bring new perspectives to our industry with things which we've never thought of before. And you know, some of the entrants came from big companies and small companies, from entrepreneurs and from students all across the world. So, you know, it's really, really exciting the ways in which they thought about the future of publishing and printing. And we've gone from 100 great entries um, to 15 brilliant shortlisted ideas and now to five fantastic finalists. Firstly, I'd like to introduce our three fabulous judges for today. Firstly, 
She is a wonderful lady from Egypt. She's the CEO of Nodded Miss Publishing House. She's also the founder of Adventures, the first education technology venture capital company in the Middle East. So please give a very warm welcome from Egypt to Dalia Ibrahim. And Andy's going to be looking at the finalists, particularly in terms of the practical uh, application and implementability of their ideas. And our third judge, you've also met her before. It's Jessica Lobo from the United Nations SDGs. Welcome, Jessica. Allow me to introduce you to my idea to bring a quality label with a QR code onto the printed book. The focus revolves around tracking the supply chain and making it transparent for the customer. This way, the customer gets information about regionality and sustainability, as well as he has, he has a direct impact on his carbon footprint. Let me give you an example from the food industry. 2015, I was asked by my local diary to create a system which lets the customer track their milk back to the farmer. The discussion was that if the customer and the producer know each other, uh, better quality is ensured as well as more revenue is generated. Today, this system is implemented and successfully developed by the Austrian brand Zurück zum Ursprung, which translates to back to the origin from Hofer. Now I want to bring this system of a transparent supply chain to the book industry. The production should be evaluated according to international and scientific recognized criteria. This information should then be uh, presented to the customer. How can we achieve this? Here we take use of a traffic light system. In combination with the circular design metrics developed by D. Smith for packaging, the focus is clear on the first look. Should the customer need more information, it's easy to scan the QR code. A beautiful aspect about the book industry is that today there are already some climate neutral labels. They give an insight into their res resources used. Now I want to bring this onto the individual book itself. Um, the QR code can also be seen as a building block. It's easy to implement other great ideas and the information database behind it can be expanded. In my opinion, in the future, transparency and honesty about the production of consumer goods is a very important aspect. Only then, a fair relationship to the customer as well as to the producer is ensured. This quality label with a QR code is my interpretation to make the printed book more sustainable. It's a brilliant idea and, and I particularly like building that transparency and, and really enabling the customers to understand where their book is, has come from. Um, and I'm one of the one things that I'm, I'm wondering, perhaps not necessarily a question, but yeah. whether the criteria can be used to be mapped onto the sustainable development goals themselves so that you're already talking about the, the goals either through the, the um, traffic light system or through when they, they scan the QR code. Because I think that could be one of the ways to really elevate this idea so that customers are understanding what the publishers are doing directly towards the goals. Hello everyone, I'm Aditya from India. I'm delighted to be part of Future Book Forum 2021. My idea is called Roll Book, which makes books affordable and sustainable. The problem that we are trying to solve is to reduce complexity in book production. Normally, hardcover books cannot be recycled because they are made up of cloth, leather, or plastic. Also, these books are binded in place using glue which makes it difficult to separate this paper and recycle. So the normal bookmaking process involves cutting wastage as these paper are stacked together and cut using a cutter. The sorting of this folder paper, which is called signatures, requires complex machinery and also the folding. The transport of the final books produced takes up a lot of space and it has to be waterproof. The gluing and stitching process 
involves complex machinery again. It has to be dried after gluing. There is inefficient use of space as due to loss of space due to margins. So my solution is called Rollbook, which eliminates various steps in book printing that makes printing more affordable and sustainable. It makes books easy to carry by reducing size and weight and no more bookmark and flipping is required. It eliminates wastage of paper by reducing cutting and hence promote sustainability. It improves recyclability of books as hardcover, gluing, binding is eliminated. So our target users are book publishers, authors, and libraries. So this is how a roll book will look like. So this is a normal book compared with a roll book. It has an higher print area and it is compact. So this is how it looks like in operation. So the impact we're trying to create is affordable books and to increase profitability for authors and publishers, reduces wastage of paper, improves recycling of books. The size of books is reduced, improving portability, scale up savings in energy and reduce carbon footprint, increase printing efficiency, as it can print on both sides continuously and simultaneously. We also plan to address United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 9, 11, 12, 13, 15, respectively. So we want uh, book publishers and authors to be successful because when they are successful, they help create a sustainable environment. Thank you very much, Canon and Hive, for this great opportunity. Maybe from my perspective, I didn't make any research about the interest of the customers for this, number one. Uh, how much this can be of, of usability for customers? Is it really so handy? It's usable. Uh, the pricing of it at the end for the end user, this is a very important thing. So to take it as a mass production. Otherwise, it can be something very fancy, getting people back to history uh, and, and nostalgia with uh, very old styles. So people can have it as one or two books just to keep it on shelves and maybe read it once and that's it. Idea number three. It's Kate Rushton, a freelance open innovation consultant, user experience manager and community manager based in Manchester in the UK. Kate is passionate about the environment and uh, feels that the world's pressing environmental problems will be solved by the collective minds of the crowds. Therefore, she has been a member of the Hive community for seven years and uh, she will now pitch to us her idea, LearnMates and uh, which makes lifelong learning through textbooks better and cheaper. This is Mina. She spends all day staring at a computer. She loves reading books and she knows she needs to upskill for jobs for the future, but she already gets way too much screen time. Her Wi-Fi connection is not great at home and on her commute, and she just loves reading books. But she never gets accredited for this reading. And there's lots of people like Mina in the world. And that's why we have LearnMates, lifelong accredited learning for reading physical books. It meets two UN Sustainable Development Goals, quality education, because it provides lifelong learning, and responsible consumption and production, because it promotes the sale of used and secondhand books. So how does LearnMates work? Mina downloads the LearnMates app and browses all of the recommended courses based on her profile. Now in the future, she might want to do UX design. So she selects a UX design course and it has a range of books that she needs to read to complete this course. She goes for the used books options and orders them to be delivered to her home. When they arrive, she's ready to take the course. She clicks it and she scans the barcodes on the books. This unlocks the learning modules. She reads the book and then she can either manually upload her answers to the app or enter them into the screen. And she's further along into completing her UX design qualification using physical books. So how will we know 
if Learnmates has been successful? Well, it's all about lifelong learning, so we'll measure the number of accreditations that people have achieved after six months or one year and more of using the app. We're planning a slow rollout with just one course in one market using a website and with a course certificate and growing to more courses, more markets and additional functionality. So that's LearnMates, lifelong accredited learning for physical books. It's accessible, you don't need a good Wi-Fi connection and it's not using video courses. It's personalised when you sign up, you'll fill out a profile and get recommendations based on your profile and the courses you've taken and it's very easy to use. One of the perhaps concerns is about all of the shipping and the logistics between the books, particularly if you, you're opening it up to everybody in the UK and somebody in Inverness wants the books first and then down in, in Cornwall wants them second. But one of the, the thoughts that I had while you were presenting is whether there's a possibility to partner up with local libraries and perhaps run the service from them. I think it could be very successful. I think the, the basic idea of having a, a peer to peer network where end users can share used books with each other is has potential to be very successful. Um. The next one is Robert Gegenhuber. Uh, Robert is from Austria and he holds a master degree in mechanical engineering and innovation management. For our civilization, books are the main pillar for transferring knowledge and to provide education. And this since centuries. Considering this fact, it is so sad that there are so many people on this world uh, that do not have sufficient access to this very valuable source due to reasons like poverty, failure of governments, and so on. So my idea, my vision is to combine book on demand with crowdfunding. From the principle like Kickstarter or Start Next on the technical side, and to make it perfect with a social ingredient. A support of one or more NGOs. This way we bring several stakeholders together. Of course, the people in need of books. An NGO that works already with staff in the region and that is always looking for further funding to do more to help the people. The book production facility with that can produce also small amount of books very efficiently. And the people all around the world that want to donate to specific projects with maximum transparency. So, how will this work? Let's see it through a fictitious example. Several schools in Ghana need a bunch of books. Mathematics, geometry, English. And they start a project at the suggested platform for BookAid to verify and clarify the their need, uh, the schools got support from two NGOs, Brave Aurora and UNICEF. So one is a local uh, association deeply rooted in this region and the other one is a very well known with a strong reputation. So a very good match for such a project. Both organizations um, do promotions for this project via their regular communication channels, social media and so on. And so a lot of people have a look at this project and then they decide if, it, if they like it or not and how much they want to donate for it. And they also can choose between different packages, a package with three books or with only one book or if they want to allocate money for transportation cost or if necessary for licensing of the content. Also editing maybe uh, need some, some allocations. And nevertheless, they, they could perhaps also say, okay, we want to donate some extra for a set of pets. So this way the help is really very specific and will help a lot. So I'm convinced with this crowdfunding fueled 
uh, book intermediary, uh, we all can make a difference to this world. I hope you think so too and will support this idea. So your idea for me is very important. Crowd uh, funding, it has been in different sectors, even in, in the entrepreneurships. Some startups make the idea of crowdfunding. So specifically in our field, it's a very a good and important point because a lot of people cannot really afford to buy the educational or cultural or in even entertainment books and have the right to read a novel or a story and so on. It's really great that the partnerships aspect of the, the idea is, is a huge value, particularly to the Sustainable Development Goals agenda and actually achieving it, but also of course one of the goals is around partnerships. It's idea number five, and this comes from Lucy Swanston in the UK. Uh, Lucy is the founder and managing director of Nutshell Creative. As a mother of three boys, work and home have been a real juggle. Giving each one-to-one -one attention was hard enough. Helping them with their reading and writing was even harder. I discovered firsthand how difficult it is to engage them. I then learnt that primary school age boys are statistically proven to be difficult to engage in literacy, so perhaps it wasn't my bad parenting skills after all. Whilst researching I became very aware of the everyday impact being illiterate has. Imagine not being able to read or write or to communicate enough to make sense of the world. Imagine you can't read a book or newspaper or understand road signs, read prescriptions or even use the internet. Lacking vital literacy skills holds a person back at every stage of their life. In the UK, only 34% of children claim to enjoy writing, yet children who are most engaged with literacy are three times more likely to have higher levels of mental well-being. Being illiterate has a huge impact on individual children's lives. So how can we address these pressing issues? One of the root causes for poor literacy is the lack of creative resources in schools. And that's where I believe we have the opportunity to make a significant shift. We as an industry need to inspire the next generation from a young age by not only satisfying their appetite for digital, but also giving them the opportunity to experience and embrace the richness print can bring into their lives. I believe that if we can do this effectively, it will positively affect our society by enabling young children to see print as a wonderful, evocative and sensory way of communicating. And this is how I propose we do it. It's every child's human right to be given the opportunity to dream, imagine, discover and be inspired. As parents, creatives, publishers, booksellers, in fact the print industry in its entirety, we have a responsibility to make this a reality. Topic Hero starts children online with their writing journey, but it finishes with the legacy, joy and tactility of a physical book. 380,000 children don't even own a book in the UK, but by combining personalisation technology and creativity together, we can reward a child with what could not only be their first book, but their very own first authored book. You know, do it. It, it seems like it's a very mature idea, um, and it seems like you're already well on your way. I, I really don't have any um, scepticism about the program, it seems really good. I would, you know, as long as it supports all kinds of writing. Working in the field of children and education books for 26 years, um, actually I want to tell you that this is a brilliant idea. It's really needed in the market. And of course you have studied quite well the impact on the uh, psychology of the kid who is going to write something from the writing experience itself. From having this printed and uh, kept uh, in his um, library and his store 
uh, this is in itself a great achievement which really motivates the kids to continue reading and writing, uh, creates a lot of um, new authors and ideas and inspiration. So I believe applying such an, an idea, it's not an idea now, it's more than that, it's, it can be a really a change in the mindset. What we see in this uh, uh, innovation challenge is that there are much more angles and uh, it's, uh, as you said, it's the uh, sustainability is the accelerator. How can we make this? And uh, the technology is there. So how can we use this? We have a fantastic case study. A case study of real sustainable innovation happening right now in your world. Um, the story comes from Finland and it's really a great example of how innovative printing and data analytics can be combined together to create highly efficient supply chain management of books and to create a more sustainable business at the same time. Take a look at this video. Otava Group is a family-owned Finnish media company established 1890. We have three main business areas. Books, which includes publishing company and printing factory. And also retail, which includes 66 stores around Finland and web store. And media, which is uh, magazine subscriptions. Uh, my name is Marko Silventoinen and I am uh, managing director of Otava Book Printing LTD. Otava has been involved in book printing business since 1906, so we have quite long roots. Our production is like 6 million books per year, and two-thirds of those books we are made for our own publisher, and one-third to the external customers. Talking about challenges in general books like fiction and non-fiction, of course, uh, key issues are probably is the availability for from the publishers' warehouse and of course the bookstores' warehouse to the customers, and uh, book life cycle management from start to end of the life cycle. Uh, three years back, we already have a, decided to have a short run production. In that point, we also. Uh, build a team which is a cross-functional team between uh, bookstores, uh, factory and, and publishing company. Uh, by this team we have uh, more transparency of the whole process and we have the data to support that. Important is how to bring the data to visualize and, and, and understandable form and so you can make decisions like uh, planning printing batches or, or making categories or making markdowns. Our printing operations uh, were quite traditional with just the offset capacity available and also our publisher's way of working was quite uh, traditional. That led us to a situation that uh, almost 30% of all printed books was not sold but being wasted from the warehouse. Also the delivery times were too long, approximately 15 days. So we were losing the sales because of the availability and we were having a problem with our warehouse which was expanding all the time. So we have to do something. And the answer was investments for printing house. We decided to invest in high speed inkjet technology. We want to start an efficient short-run production with exactly the same papers what we are using in our offset production. And also the printing quality must be as good as we can get out of our offset production. We were looking a partner, not just a print engine provider. And as a partner, I mean that we are able to develop also our business and workflow together. After the investments for the printing house and workflow solutions, we are able to handle over 3,000 different jobs yearly. And our average print run is around 1,500 at the moment. And 25% of all our production is going through high-speed inkjet uh, printers. Also, we have reduced our delivery time from 15 days to 5 days if needed. We can handle highly flexible order sizes. 
The efficient uh, short-run production helps us to optimize in book life cycle management. Uh, in the short run, it's the most important thing that uh, we have if we want to maintain uh, a lot of titles and as many titles as we have now. In the future, we have we need more transparency between uh, factory and and, and uh, business divisions. We have now starting to use uh, more data analytics and uh, real-time triggers across the whole value chain to improve forecasting ideal drink patches. That really helps us to improve inventory levels and sales. By adapting a short-run production to value chain, we are reducing inventory on a new titles by 15% in coming years. And of course, we can offer this benefit to our, our other customers as well. Welcome Marco and Pekka, um, live from Helsinki. Was it the technology which started your, your innovation and your transformational journey? Or did you think more holistically about the, the bigger vision for how you wanted to transform your company? Uh, of course, we already had an idea to develop the whole supply chain and uh, utilize more data to forecasting, for example. So idea was definitely first. I think our idea just just need some kind of starting point and, and the investments for printing house was maybe that starting point. And also I have to mention that after the investment decision we kept also a quite nice workshop with Canon. Our own publisher and Becca was also involved and we we clarified the short run possibilities with high, high speed inkjet printers to everyone and, and it was very fruitful. And now when we have new technology in, in uh, printing factory, it enables us also start to think that we can uh, use more data and more automatic processes for forecasting and, and, and optimize printing patches. But that, that's what I think is actually really the key. It's about data and how can you, how can you understand more your production, but also on the other side, the sales and, and, and the distribution yes. uh, topics that we have. So when you think about data analytics and real-time triggers, they seem to be key components uh, in this data-driven supply chain management. Can you give us an example which data you use and what challenges you face when implementing this process? Over 10 years we used the automatic replenishment process in the stores and we use of course the post data. But in a publisher point of view we only have post data from our own bookstores so it doesn't cover all the market and, and we have also of course wholesale data from publisher point of view and, and one of the key uh, challenges is how to combine this data. Pekka, when you think about this, you already mentioned the benefits for, for the publishers using such a data-driven uh, supply chain. Can you highlight again the benefits for publishers? Because that's what I think uh, Marco needs to understand and, and how, the, how, how to sell it actually actively to convince them. Of course, the benefits are a better availability, reducing inventory of two key issues, I think. Anyone nowadays want to print into the warehouse and not so sold to books. So I think that's the key point of our story. Can you tell us a little bit more about the sustainability goals at Ottawa? And uh, as I mentioned, the main key issues is that uh, we lower the inventory. We don't print books to the warehouse. We want that uh, every book that we print is sold. And uh, we have also quite good situation that our logistic provider and warehouse is same premises that uh, uh, our printing factory, so we can distribute straight from the factory to the retail customers also. Um, so great, thank you very much for, uh, for being with us and we are very proud to see really that our technology is used at Ottawa and uh, we are very excited for the further developments that uh, Ottawa is doing, how this concept contributes to a more sustainable business with printed books. Now Peter, Okay, so it's the moment of truth. <laughs> it's the award ceremony. It's when we emerge from that innovator's cauldron and we find out who is the 2021 innovation champion from Canon's Idea Challenge. In fifth place, in fifth place with 10% of the votes, we have Adi from India with the rollable book. Fantastic. In fourth place, 
Oh, a round of applause to Adam, particularly from Helsinki, I think that was. It was. <laughs> In fourth place, with 13%, we have Kate Rushton from the UK with LearnMates. Congratulations to Kate. In third place, with 14% of the votes, it's all very close, it's Robert. Robert Gegenhuber from Austria, from Linz, with uh, Print on Demand meets the crowd. And so we have the last two. So we had a clear winner, as you can see, with 43% of the vote. Who is it? The winner is Lucy, and uh, you've seen it. It's fantastic, and thank you very, very much for participating. Okay, so congratulations to congratulations. Lucy Swanston uh, for Topic Heroes, the winner of the Idea Challenge 2021. Congratulations, Lucy. Thank you so much, everybody who uh, participated in the competition, and thank you particularly um, to our finalists. Together we keep going to the next place, don't we? It gets better and better each year, and I think you know I've thoroughly enjoyed this year. It, uh, it was a fun. It was really cool. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. See you next year. Thank you. Bye.